Hey everybody, this is July 17th, 2007. I'm Sonic Sons. Beware, beware, beware the phantoms of the mind. Is it a term I've come up with for a large number of, of well, cognitive biases, I guess you might say, uh, problems in one's thinking. Uh, which I, I think we all suffer from in, in various degrees, right? Because nobody's perfect. And it's something which I strongly believe you have to watch out for. The phantoms of the mind, of course, is, is a general term. It often applies to things which, upon scrutiny, fade away. But then, whenever you're not looking at it, it comes back again. In, in your mind, that is. So, it's like the racist who doesn't think he's a racist, right? And you ask him, are you a racist? And in his mind, he's looking at himself, he looks at the racism area, and the phantom disappears. And he goes, no, I'm not a racist. Oh, I believe the whites and blacks are just perfectly the same. But later that day, he's walking by, and he walks next to a white man, you know? Shakes his hand, says hello, walks on by, and sees a black man. And the phantom creeps up again, and he's not thinking about whether or not he's racist. So he just goes on his basic thought of, oh, well, that black guy, you know, he doesn't look very friendly. He, he looks mean or something, you know, and he just kind of, just kind of, you know, looks the other way, kind of a cold expression, you know. And you ask him later, are you a racist? He goes, no, I'm not a racist. <laughs> Even though he is, he doesn't realize it. Because every time he looks at this thing, it kind of fades away. You no, no, I'm fine, you know. And every time you're not thinking about it, Phantom reappears. Or people who don't realize various negative aspects about themselves. You don't realize your own greed, your own anger, your own, you know, various problems. Or how about people in, a, in an abusive relationship, you know? Get a woman down and, and you chalk it out. You talk about all the things this man has done to her, you know, if he's been abusive. And she'll have to logically say, yeah, you know, I, I guess I have to leave him. But then two hours later, as she's driving home or whatever, she just forgets that logical conclusion and goes back to the phantom. And just goes back to that thinking, no, well, you know, I, I have to stay with him. And she just makes up some reason to justify that, right? You know, another example of the phantoms is when you see some evidence that disputes your own worldview and you simply ignore it, you know? Not even arguing against it sometimes, you know, sometimes people do counter-argue. What's really interesting is when the facts come out and you just, you just look the other way, you know? Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you believe things are going well in Iraq. I'm gonna keep returning to this subject. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then, the recent benchmark thing comes out. It says we're making less than satisfactory progress. You know, out of 18 things, eight of them got rated satisfactory progress. And by the way, it's the president's people who prepared that report. You know, and you just kind of ignore that. The IPCC. International Panel on Climate Change, Intergovernmental, I'm sorry, releases a report which says uh, the Earth is getting hotter, number one. We did this, number two. Number three, this is a bad thing. Number four, we've got to do something about it. This, this thing, uh, signed by over 2,000 scientists, they employed over 2,000 scientific experts to look over the facts. And you take this report of 2,000 scientists and you, and you just ignore it. Just, just what? What are, you, what are you talking about? You know. Or maybe you don't like Muslims. <laughs> and a good person comes by who happens to be Muslim and you just go, oh, well, yeah, he's an exception. He's a, you know, and you... And you just completely like, wait a minute, this is, uh, this is evidence here that maybe I'm wrong. You know, going in tangent with that is fixating on a certain belief 
and then taking it to the extreme. In other words, the loss of reasonableness. I believe in reasonableness. In my very first video, I said, I admit I may be wrong on any issue, even, even like my religion, right? I consider myself a very religious person, or very spiritual anyway, right? Um, but hey, I don't truly know everything about God. I'm sure I've got misconceptions and you know, I detect these in myself all the time sometimes. I'll be like, you know, certain things which I, uh, which I feel like I ought to do. My creative works, for instance, you know, and I think, no, I, I, that's, I couldn't do that. That's impossible. You know, that'd be too hard. And I think, now wait a minute. <laughs> Why would that be too hard? Wouldn't that, you know, can't I? How hard would it be? Just try. No, no, there's no way I'd be able to do that. No. And then I could throw religion in there, like, well, wait, you know, wouldn't it? If this is truly a good thing, wouldn't God be able to help me out? Well, oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. the phantoms, <laughs> the phantoms come up, and it's just, oh yeah, I, well yeah, but you know, is there any evidence to support your claim, sir? <laughs> Regardless, you know, whatever various claim it may be. The phantoms come up in self-justification, you know. They did some some survey, right? And they asked people, all right, name some time when uh, someone hurt you, like emotionally, generally speaking, and another time when you hurt some other person. And then uh, describe, you know, why you think people did this. Uh, so in, in, in all cases, um, there's some pretty typical things, generally like... Um, family like betrayals and stuff and these your friendships and you know, there's some several common themes of when you'd you know felt like you'd hurt someone or someone had hurt you but there was a major difference in the justification area and people almost inevitably said when someone hurt me it was irrational and it hurt me for a long time I took so much time getting over it you know but when they say I hurt this other person it was described as you know pretty well justified even if they had some regret, like, yeah, but there was a reason for it. And they said, you know, and, and the, the pain was temporary, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I, uh, I didn't really hurt them. <laughs> I believe it was in the book, Mistakes Were Made, But Not By Me. I haven't read that book, but the title, yeah, says a lot. There's the phantoms again, convincing you that, oh, well, I know what I'm doing. I'm doing this right. I'm, you know fixating on a certain belief and taking that to the extreme. Patriotism, for instance. Oh, that's a nice thing. Sure, we support patriotism. But like anything else, you know, you can take it too far. Like the Nazis, for instance. Whose patriotism was so great that they were willing to kill innocent people and commit all sorts of horrible crimes. Not because they were sadistic most of the time, most people didn't get on this board because they felt like killing people is because they got sucked into this idea of patriotism, which is such a good thing in general, but you take it to the extreme, and suddenly you're doing evil things. You know. Some people take American patriotism too far, and no, we're not like Nazi Germany, but some people think that America can't make any mistakes. <laughs> we are infallible. <sighs> we do make mistakes. I'm sorry to tell you. You know, and our religious leaders make mistakes too. Only God himself does not make mistakes, and nobody really understands God anyway, so... <laughs> it's hard. It's nearly impossible to pick any one thing and literally carry that to infinity. You have to be reasonable. And you have to be aware of yourself. Check your own thoughts. See your own biases. Make sure that you're believing in things based on what's real and not just based on what you think is real. Beware the phantoms of the mind. Thanks for watching. See you later.